Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this press conference. As usual, you find a translation on channel one, English, two, French, three, Spanish, four, German, and five, Portuguese. I would like to uh, welcome uh, everybody on the stage, starting with our president, uh, um, Mr. Blatter, then we have the um, chairman of the uh, organizing committee and uh, also member of the uh, executive committee of FIFA, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Hayatu. Uh, then we have, I just go through, uh, Luis Fernandez, deputy minister of sports, uh, and then uh, the president of the LOC, uh, Mr. Marin, and next to me, uh, Jerome Walk, uh, secretary general of FIFA. Said that, I will pass the floor uh, to the president. Thank you. Uh, good, uh, good day or good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for this uh, media briefing, after the meetings we have had uh, yesterday, the local organizing committee and today FIFA's organizing committee, World Cup Brazil 2014. I'm very happy uh, to be with you today and I thank you uh, for the interest that you show uh, to the World Cup and in this case uh, specifically uh, for the, the draw. I think this will be the most important item on uh, the agenda of our press conference today. Uh, the excitement is building up here in Brazil, I'm sure, and in the world. And uh, there is, uh, that's normal because uh, if we say that football has been organized in Great Britain, and especially in England, I would say the soul of football and the simple reality is that football is Brazilian. And uh, football is Brazil and it means uh, that uh, we are going forward uh, to a wonderful World Cup. And don't forget that the uh, Sierra Accent, the uh, Brazilians, they are five times a world champion and I'm sure uh, they will try to keep the crown, to keep or get it back. But all the others, they will do the same. And especially Europe will try to win for the first time on the Afri American continent, because when the World Cup was played in North or South America, there was no victory for a European team. I'm very happy to be also, and to thank the uh, state of Bahia uh, to organize uh, this draw in this uh, wonderful setting of Costa do Saupe. But let's come to the, to the facts. I said we had the two organizing committees today and uh, we had just come out of the FIFA organizing committee and uh, we have discussed or taken note of all the reports that have been presented and uh, finally, I can say uh, that uh, we are very satisfied and going to be happy in this, uh, let's say, going together between Brazil, the government and the people of Brazil, the football of Brazil, and FIFA with its 208 national associations, the 209th is Brazil, uh, to a great event uh, next year, I'm sure. You know that there is, and we know that, and we have just uh, received a report, uh, there are some small uh, delays in uh, construction of stadia, but so small that with one exception, uh, we can just close eyes and say well, everything will be ready. There is one fact that has happened just one week ago, and which is a very sad one uh, because in an accident in Sao Paulo, we had to deplore the loss of two people. They lost their life and I'm very unhappy of that and uh, we are feeling with the families. But concerning the damage which has been made there, uh, 
it will be uh, reconstructed, re uh, renovated, and the stadia will be ready. Finally, it's a question of uh, trust and confidence when we go into such a big event like a FIFA World Cup. And here again, I have to express our trust and our confidence in the organization here, in the state, in the uh, central government, in the state governance, in the prefatos of the different uh, cities, and the reports we have listened to today, they give us the uh, security that we will go forward to a very positive one. You know that I'm an optimist, but don't forget, optimists, they live better and longer. So therefore, we uh, go on with this optimism also in future, and I'm uh, very happy to be with you today, the next two days, and uh, we will have the opportunity to meet again after the executive committee. I give back the floor to Walter de Gregorio. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, President. Uh, Monsieur Yatou, les considérations de vous, s'il vous plaît. Your comments, please, sir. Merci. Thank you. Mr. President, as chairman of the organizing committee, I would like to say to our friends from the media that we cannot yet say that everything is ready, but in the light of what has been done and what has been said, and by the commitment not only by FIFA but also by Brazil, there is good hope that uh, this uh, World Cup will fully satisfy the requirements and wishes of Brazil. And uh, we are very happy to come here to Brazil. And this for football will add an additional charm. Now, let me say that the executive committee meeting prepared by this organizing committee definitely reflected the hope and expectations of everybody of us that this will be a very successful World Cup. We have uh, six months to go, and they will allow us to iron out the little creases we may have. Not everything is yet fully ready, but it will be ready. The organization will be ready. The political will is there. FIFA has mobilized everybody in its ranks. And uh, I can tell you what we will organize next June and July in I think it's going to be summer here. It will be a wonderful World Cup that will satisfy everybody. This is what I wanted to tell you, and I also want to tell you that we will do whatever is in our reach to make this a huge success. I thank you. Merci, Monsieur Yatou. Alors, je passe la parole au président du LOC. I would like now to give the floor to the chairman of the organizing committee, Mr. Marin. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Bahia and welcome to Brazil. It is a great pleasure to be here today in what for us who have worked for the preparation of the event is the first match of a World Cup. On Friday, fans full of expectations throughout the world will be looking to Costa do Sauipi when we will get to know the matches of 2014, remembering historic matches and projecting the duels amongst the main names of world football. While fans and journalists shall be analyzing the results of the matches, for the local organizing committee, it will be a moment to look towards the planning of the national teams being certain that we will give all players the best conditions to practice and to play, to travel and to rest. After the draw, and especially at the beginning of next year, our teams will be even closer to the six stadia that did not receive matches of the Confederations Cup. 
We are now working with our eyes directed towards the first matches that these stadia will receive after January. Coming to an ampex in other test events that we will do in partnerships with the stadia after March with our team involved in areas such as volunteers, cleaning, spectator services, and press operations. Therefore, we will be working to guarantee a fantastic and unique spectacle in 2014, at the same time in which the World Cup will catalyze a new era for the five times world champion football in terms of services to the teams and especially to all spectators and fans. I see you on Friday on the final draw. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, President Marine. And uh, now, uh, Luis, uh, it's up to you, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to greet all the representatives of the press here on behalf of the Brazilian government. And I would like to tell you that this week is the final stage and decisive stage of a preparation for the 2014 FIFA World Cup in Brazil. We yesterday had the meeting of the local organizing board, which has the participation of the federal government. Today we had the meeting of the organizing committee for FIFA, and on Friday we shall have the draw, which shall finally define the different groups of the competition, and once that is defined, we go into the stage which is totally decisive of the final preparation for the World Cup. We have two significant challenges ahead of us. The first is to, during the month of January, and in the case of one city extending until February, the delivery of the six remaining stadia for the World Cup. And that is a delivery which guarantees that we shall have the necessary timing to do all the operational planning, guaranteeing that all stadia are in full operational conditions in June of 2014. Next, we shall also have the operational planning, which will be very intense, together with the LOC, as well as with the 12 host cities. We will have a schedule of extensive meetings, of joint meetings in each one of the host cities to integrate all operational plans, guaranteeing that the 2014 World Cup shall be even more successful than the Confederation Cup held this year, 2013. Regarding this preparation, I must mention that we already have six stadia ready, the six which were used during the FIFA Confederations Cup. Those six stadia of the Confederations Cup include the stadia which were the biggest and with the more complex construction work, and therefore they are all fully operational to receive the World Cup. And now, we also have the completion of the six remaining stadia, which will be delivered in a timely manner to be ready for the World Cup. Obviously, we would like to mention, as has been done by President Blatter, we would like to say that we are very sorry for the accident which took place during the Corinthians Stadium construction in Sao Paulo, especially due to the fatal victims with that accident, and we will have a report a detailed report ready until the end of this week, allowing us to re-plan, but all the indications we have is that there will be no losses to the schedule in order to guarantee that we will have feasible time for all the preparation work, not only for the stadium, but also for the operational planning, which will be done next. So we have a message of great confidence, and I would like to close mentioning that President Blatter used two terms in English. Trust and confidence. In Portuguese, it's one single word which has both meanings, which is confiança in Portuguese. And confiança in Portuguese includes both the optimism towards the challenge we have and the certainty that we shall deliver what must be delivered to guarantee the success of the 2014 FIFA World Cup. 
the confidence, but also the confidence in terms of the word trust, of the partnership, of a mutual respect. And I would say that this is the key aspect of the success of the FIFA World Cup 2014. All the players involved, the federal government, the government of the host cities, the local organizing committee together with CBF, the Brazilian Confederation, Football Confederation and FIFA, we are partners that are all working together to guarantee that the 2014 FIFA World Cup be a resounding success. And we are very trustworthy that that will be the case. And now, last but not least, Jerome, please. Thank you. So I will, uh, I will touch a uh, few points uh, regarding the stadiums. You will ask questions, so there will be time to answer your questions, I'm sure. Regarding uh, price money, uh, it has to be approved by the Finance Committee, which is meeting after tomorrow morning. So you will have a final information about the price money for the 2014 FIFA World Cup uh, after the, uh, at the Executive Committee press conference. But I can tell you that uh, it's a large increase uh, mainly also because we have this club protection program, we have this insurance program in place uh, for the players who will play at the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. You know that we have also this club price money where we give 70, 70 million to the clubs uh, who provide the players uh, to the national teams playing at, at the World Cup. And again, there is a large amount which is for the, for the teams, uh, from the winner uh, to the last one. And this number has to be approved by the Finance Committee, so that's why I cannot give you exactly the figure today. Uh, but altogether, it will be at least plus 33% if you compare with the 2010 uh, FIFA World Cup. There's an information I have to give you before we talked about the draw. It's about the action we will have for uh, blind and partly sight football fans. As you can see on the, on the slide, uh, there's a big difference with what we did in South Africa. It will be a service available in four stadiums. Uh, it will be via radio frequency and uh, it will be a personal uh, radio headset. So it means that you can be seated anywhere in the stadium when in South Africa it was just allocated seat. Um, it is uh, done with uh, two, uh, let's say, organizations, CAFE, the Center for Access to Football in Europe, and Ureche Sports and Culture, a Brazilian organization. And the equipment will remain behind or after the World Cup to the local entities uh, who could use it uh, for, the, for the future. Now, coming to, to the draw. So the draw, you know, there are 32 teams playing at the World Cup 2014. 13 teams from Europe, six from South America, five from Africa, four from Asia, and four from North and Central America and Caribbean. These 32 teams are divided in four pots. The four pots will be, if you have a picture in mind, the four pots will be on my left, and on my right there will be eight pots which correspond to the groups. Uh, so you see that on the pot one you will have the seeded teams, the season teams, it's Brazil, and the seven top teams based on the FIFA Coca-Cola World Ranking of October 2013, as it was decided by the FIFA Executive Committee in October. It is four European teams, Belgium, Germany, Spain, and Switzerland, and another three South American teams, Argentina, Colombia, and Uruguay. So here you have the pot one. If we go to the next slide, you will see the first pot, as I said, and then you will see the second pot. The second pot would be the five African teams, Algeria, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Nigeria, and the two remaining South American teams, Chile, Ecuador. The pot three will be the team from Asia, Australia, Iran, Japan, Korea Republic, and the team from CONCACAF, Costa Rica, Honduras, Mexico, and USA. And the fourth pot, it's the European one with nine teams, I will explain later. With Bosnia-Herzegovina, Croatia, England, France, Greece, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, and Russia. The principles, you know them. The principles, they are the same, meaning that teams of the same qualification zone cannot be drawn into the same group, with one exception, Europe, having 13 European teams. A maximum of two European teams may populate any one group. The order of the draw 
we will empty from one to four and we will fill from A to H. We potentially will have to skip some of the groups in order to maintain the principle of the geographical separation. The positioning of the teams, the teams from the pot one will automatically be assigned in the position one, starting with Brazil as the host. So Brazil will be A1, and then we will draw the ball from the pot one and put all the remaining seven teams in the position one of the remaining seven groups. The non seeded teams, meaning the teams from the pot two, three, and four, will have their position randomly drawn as it is always done. Now we have, a, let's say, a specific situation with this uh, pot two and these nine European. So you will see on the next one, slide, or maybe it's not a slide, it's only me who have the information. Back. No, no, it's okay. So in order to, uh, to create a, uh, a flow, which is a normal flow between the pot one and four, as you have seen, so okay, come to the next, next one, the, the past one here. Yeah. You see that on the pot two, you have only seven teams. So in order to have eight teams per group, we will draw one European team from the pot four. So the ninth European team, which is in the pot four, will be drawn and add into the pot two which means that before we are starting the draw, we will have eight teams in each of the pot. Eight teams in pot one, eight teams in pot two, with uh, the five Africans, the two remaining South Americans, and one European, the Asian, and the CONCACAF, and the pot four with the eight European. We have four pots with eight teams each. In order to avoid, I would say, a risk of um, violating the principle of the geographic separation in order to avoid any mistake, having in pot two, three confederations, which means that none of the South American team can end up into a group with the South American team, so have to be in a European team group, and the European cannot be in a European group, has to be in a South American. We have decided, or the organizing committee of the FIFA World Cup 2014 has decided to create a pot X. The pot X is composed of the four South American teams which have been drawn from the pot one, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Uruguay. We will then draw the ball, the European ball from pot two, and we will right after draw a ball from the pot X to immediately allocate the European team into one of the group with the South American team. Which means that we don't have any more the risk to end up with a lack of space for this European team having filled the other ones. So again, I repeat, the European team which is in pot two will be drawn and then we will draw a ball from the pot X where you have the four South American teams, which are Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Uruguay, to determine in which group this European team from pot two will play. Having done that, we will empty the pot two, making sure that again, we don't have these two South American teams, Chile and Ecuador, with Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Uruguay, and being sure that they will be with the European team, seated in pot one, and we'll empty the pot three, and we'll empty the pot four. So the only one, may I may say, challenge or risk is to make sure that this pot two is at the end with the right teams in the right group to protect this FIFA principle of the draw. It's not easy to understand at the first time. I agree with you. It took me some time to, uh, to be sure that I have the right explanation. Uh, but I can tell you, that it means that it's a draw, and all the balls are drawn. And there is no team, except the first eight, which are the seeded teams, which are immediately or automatically playing in one of the group. We, just, we are just drawing permanently the teams to make sure that they are in these different groups. Um, I don't think that I have much to say about this draw, but I'm ready to answer any question you will have regarding the procedure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jérôme. And uh, before I uh, give you the floor, just uh, to, to, uh, to be very clear, I hope you will understand, we are here to talk about Brazil. 
This is the press conference after the organizing committee. So ask any questions regarding Brazil, regarding the draw. There will be a second press conference, as you know, after the executive committee in two days. And of course, there will be a lot of other subjects uh, that will be discussed in the meeting. And of course, you can ask the questions. But for today, we're focusing on Brazil. So before I give you the floor, as always, one question. Uh, tell us uh, who you are and who you're working for, and, uh, and then we go. Maybe another mic, please. Hello, uh, Rodrigo Matos from Wall. Uh, I'd like to ask about uh, the Corinthians Stadium. Uh, I think Valky maybe could uh, answer that. Uh, since there is no full report yet, technical report, we are waiting for the authorities and all the brush. And can, how can FIFA be sure today that the stadium will be ready for the opening match? And if there is any concern that when the full report comes, um, there will be any change on the confidence that the president showed today. Um, as it was said by the president, but also by, by Luis Fernandez, yes, it's correct. We are waiting for the final investigation or, fin or first report uh, on what has happened. Uh, in the meantime, we had uh, some discussion, technical discussion, with the company responsible for the construction of the stadium. And um, I mean, we know that depending on when the green light will be given to restart the work, um, but still, we know that we are in uh, a period of time where the opening game of the World Cup will be played in Sao Paulo. Uh, so we are not in a crisis mood where we are looking at any alternative to Sao Paulo uh, today. I mean, we are confident that yes, we, we can and they can rely and deliver on time the stadium. I'm not saying on time being by the end of the year, definitely not, but I'm saying on time for us to have the time to be ready to host the opening game in Sao Paulo. So that's what I can tell you today. Uh, again, as, I, as it was said, if the report is a very, very negative report, I don't know. But based on the information we have today, I can say that we are confident that yes, it will, it will happen. Please, the lady over there. Microphone, please. Going, uh, Mr. Valka, going a little bit further on that, I read there are problems too in the stadium of Curitiba. And I think I heard Vice Minister Fernandez mention the month February. <laughs> and I read your article saying that the stadium should be delivered until the December. 31st. Which stadia is, is, does FIFA, is FIFA okay with the fact that some stadia could be delivered just in February or is that true? Is, is that a risk? And how is Curitiba? So firstly, Curitiba is the one where we are facing uh, uh, the, the most um, uh, problems and uh, clearly Curitiba will not be delivered before the end of February uh, 2014. Um, so that's a fact. And uh, we had the uh, uh, people of Curitiba attending the local organizing committee board meeting yesterday, and we discussed with them uh, about the situation. Uh, but yes, this stadium uh, is facing some, of, some problems. Uh, so we, we organize ourselves to, uh, to be ready to uh, get the stadium at the end of February 2014 and to add manpower in order to uh, install all the temporary facilities we need as IT and others uh, and it's important for us also to make sure that sooner than later we have a sitting plan in order selling tickets that we are selling tickets which correspond to a seat and not tickets which are not linked to a seat because we cannot do that as you can imagine so yes there will be i think two stadiums uh, without talking about sao paulo where they will be delivered more in the region of uh, february than uh, january or december but it's still um, something where uh, we will cope with This is the next one, Tariq. What? Tariq, yes, please. 
Sure. Um, I think she just. To, I think she was asking, "What's the other stadium?" This isn't my question. That was you said Curitiba and another stadium. We have. Uh, we we had also uh, some uh, questions about Cuiaba, uh, who is not uh, perfectly uh, ready for the time which was uh, scheduled. Uh, my question is for Minister Luis Fernandez. Um, the matrix of responsibility, the latest one, was published last week and or the week before, and it had um, the stadium cost rose by eight billion. Yet the overall cost of the World Cup still seems to be around 25 billion. Looking at it closer, it looks like even more urban mobility programs in Brazil have had to be scrapped in order to keep this budget. Now, in terms of a post-World Cup legacy, I know this will be a great World Cup, everyone's going to have a good time, but Brazil is expecting this World Cup to, to, to generate urban mobility programs, new infrastructure in the country, yet every time one of these matrix is published, more and more seems to get cut. Um, can you comment on that, please? I thank you for your question, and I'll answer you in Portuguese. Please use the translation. In fact, last week we did announce the fifth balance on the construction work of the World Cup, which involves a inve total number of investments of 25.6 billion reais, just above 12 billion U.S. dollars. Those are construction work related to infrastructure, which will be a legacy for the Brazilian people after the World Cup, all of the construction work, including the stadia. The stadia with a total consolidated investment of 8 billion reais. We have already had a performance, a public performance in the stadia, which will host for the Confederations Cups in the games and matches of the, Confeder of the Brazilian League and also in other events as they are multi-use arenas, which show the great success of the Brazilian football at a different level. A data which is very relevant, which many people questioned before the Confederations Cup, is regarding the sustainability, for example, of a Mané Garincha Stadium in Brasilia. And the fact is that in only four months of operation after the Confederations Cup, the public attending events in the Mané Garincha Stadium in Brasilia superior to the four decades of existence before the Confederations Cup. So that's a very significant figure. Regarding the urban mobility infrastructure, the first item of, invents, of investments in the responsibility matrix is construction work in terms of urban mobility and transportation. What has been removed from the matrix were in the level of the program of PAC, the Growth Acceleration Program for the World Cup. Some of that work will already be ready for the World Cup. They have been removed in the city of Porto Alegre, above all. But there was a request from the city government of Porto Alegre to remove them from the matrix to guarantee a funding model which would be necessary to guarantee that that construction work could be guaranteed regardless of their use for the World Cup. So if we look at the evolution as a whole, all the urban mobility construction work shall be maintained as a legacy for the Brazilian people after the World Cup. So I'd like to repeat that we might have have uh, a national team of another country or fans leaving Brazil with a World Cup work. Thank you, Luis. Uh, so, next one here, but uh, please again tell us who you are and who you're working for. You have this information from our side, so please, yes. Sí, buenos días. Sebastián Fez de la Agencia DPA. The matches, 1,300 hours in Natal and Recife. Now, are you in, in favor of this change of schedule? And is FIFA having problems, for instance, to evaluate the climatic conditions, heat, etc.? cetera, uh, the same way you're looking into conditions of Qatar? Thank you. On a question uh, I have received uh, just uh, 10 days ago in uh, Rome, um, I have said that uh, there is a possibility to have a look on uh, the uh, kick-off times. Uh, this has not been the case now, 
uh, not, not um, I would say it was not an official confirmation, but tomorrow with the executive committee, we will do that, that there is no change in the kickoffs. I'm just a re response to the first question. The second one, um, yes, uh, I take uh, this question with uh, some uh, irony. In uh, 1986 in Mexico, uh, we played at noon time a lot of the matches at noon time in Mexico at the, uh, at the altitude in different cities over 2,000 meters by a uh, very in, in big heat, uh, the best one they are expecting. The World Cup is also a question of uh, the calendar and we cannot play more than three matches in the first uh, three matches a day. Um, or we must play three matches a day and then we have three different uh, kickoff time. Not everybody will be happy, but there is a saying in the world, you cannot make everybody happy in the world. This is uh, something that nobody can do it. May I, add, may, I may I add, President, that, I mean, the decision was not made uh, being seated in Zurich and the uh, snow falls. Uh, uh, with minus 50, I mean it's plus 28 in, in Manaus. So the uh, match calendar was uh, organized in order to secure as much as we can uh, no game being played at 1 p.m. in these uh, conditions where the temperature are higher than in other parts of the country. But again, I can tell you that we are perfectly and we're perfectly aware about the weather conditions when this match schedule was organized it has been questions coming very often from your side uh, but it was done uh, in a, in a professional way and not just uh in london jerome you spoke about the there's, there's two questions actually to this first one is procedurally will you be drawing the team from pot four to go into pot two after the first pot has been been drawn or at the very outset of the draw and second would be the likely course what was the decision what was the thinking behind that decision um with regard to to, to which team from the european group should be moved into the uh, the, the pot two uh, i will answer the first question and the president will answer the second one you agree so the first one eight balls in the four pots before we are starting the draw. Now the question about why a draw versus picking up based on the ranking the ninth European into pot two, it was a decision made uh, by uh, the... Uh, it, it, it was a decision made by the executive committee uh, speaking first with but not let us pick up teams. Thank you. Yes, please. I have a question for President Blatter concerning the subject of security. There is a social security aspect. I mean, it's such a huge event coming back to South America and mainly to Brazil. El tema, the, uh, the, the matter of uh, security uh, was one of the points which have had the most attention in uh, the uh, of the country. It is a matter which is part of the guarantees uh, given uh, by the uh, governments when uh, a World Cup is assigned to one of the, uh, the countries. In um, comparison, uh, what has happened uh, during uh, the, uh, the Confederations Cup, I can only say this is handled. Uh, I have no better uh, personality here present on this desk uh, then uh, Mr. Luis Fernandez, the Vice Minister of Sports, uh, to give some details on that. Thank you. So Brazil tested during the Confederations Cup a model of governance for the security which is adapted to the country's reality as a country in continental in size and with a very complex federation system sharing the responsibility between the federal government and its many ministries, the state governments and the city governments and a model and governance planning system was established which according to the constitutional responsibilities grants responsibility 
to be extraordinary secretary of security for large events and under the Ministry of Justice, there's a Ministry of Defense, there is the Brazilian intelligence agency, ABING, and the President's security office, and there are also all the players and forces which are responsible for public safety in each one of the host cities. This involves very complex planning probably one of the most challenging subjects in terms of operational planning for the World Cup. This model has been tested during the Confederations Cup, as all of you ladies and gentlemen know, in very adverse and unforeseen conditions. This model was tested to its limit and produced results, in our opinion, which were very positive. The safety of all participants of the Confederations Cup was guaranteed, both of the athletes athletes, as well as the technical teams, as well as the referees, as well as the sponsors and spectators, and the Confederations Cup was a success of public of technical success, commercial success, and this also makes us very confident, which is a key word President Blatter mentioned in his opening remarks, that this very same planning, if intensified, shall also produce important and positive results during the World Cup. The Brazilian government, the Brazilian state in all three levels will make everything possible to guarantee the best security for all participants of the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. That is the guarantee which we can give you all. Apart from that, we also understand, and this is our assessment, that Brazil being the country of football, a country which is passionate for football, the environment and expectations for the World Cup, which will reach a different level with Friday's draw, will guarantee a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of mobilization of all of the Brazilian population, and this climate itself will be a crucial aspect to guarantee the safety of the event in 2014. Thank you. Before we go to the last two questions, just uh, uh, two information. So we will hand out the draw procedure after the press conference, so at least you have it also in, in, in writing. And the second one is uh, uh, stay seated because after the press conference there will be a preview of the new Adidas Brazuca match ball. It's under embargo until 8 p.m. local time. Okay, then we go with uh, the one question here. <coughs> Hi, from the Associated Press. I was reading that when uh, football and FIFA were simpler, um, Jules Rimet had his grandson do the draw. Um, now we've got 3,000 odd people coming all the way to this resort, over 20 billion, no, million uh, riyas being spelt, spent on this. Um, why have we come here for the draw? Why does it have to be so expensive and some would say extravagant? Um, why, why does it have to be just uh, as, you know, in a place where it's going to be impossible for any protesters to get to? I mean, we're here in a place that millions of Brazilians would never even dream of being able to step foot in. Concerning the, uh, the place of the draw, uh, I will uh, give then uh, the floor uh, to the uh, local organizing committee. But the draw itself, my dear friend, I have to tell you, that is an integrated part now of the big show, which is the World Cup. And when Jules Rimet uh, made the World Cup or organized the first World Cup, okay, uh, then it was an easy draw. Uh, there was not, uh, I don't know uh, how many teams there were there exactly, but when I started to work in FIFA, the draw was also easy. It was 16 teams. And the World Cup had not yet get the, let's say, the, the enthusiasm and uh, the, uh, the, the prime rating of international competitions as it is now in the world, FIFA's World Cup. And then if you go to the final, to the final draw, it is the last, the last, uh, opportunity just to show the world the big show will come in six months but today or tomorrow we will show you what that means and it is it is accepted by everybody that the world by the world by all the football fans 
that the draw must be, must be a spectacular draw, and therefore there shall also be spectators. Now, why it is here? Uh, because it is here because of what? And this I give the floor uh, to Mr. Marin. Why do we have the floor here, uh, the, the draw here? The draw is being held here as it could take place in any place or part of Brazil. Our country is a continental country in size. I've already mentioned this and repeated it many times. So it's very easy to answer the question. It could take place in any part of Brazil. There would be the same availability of all authorities and especially of the population to receive in the best manner possible not only the members of FIFA but all of our visitors, our brothers from other countries. What is important is instead of being worried about the place, what is important for us Brazilians is to receive the 32 national teams in the best manner possible, with our arms and hands open and extended, welcoming all of our brothers from other countries. This is part of a party of football. It is not the time for us to question and leaving to a second plan the grandiosity of this event. Brazil has to show to the whole world that we are not only a country which is big in the five world championships which we have won abroad. We must also show that we are also champions in the competencies, in the capacity, and above all in the trust, thanks to the work of all, to be able to organize a fantastic World Cup. This has to be the big concern, offering safety, and offering above all, which is very important, our hospitality, allowing the visitors to feel as if they were in their own homes. It's being here, but it could also be in any corner of Brazil, anywhere in Brazil, because all of Brazil is integrated with this event. All of Brazil is united around this event. And we, above all, are very happy and pleased to be able to organize this great event on Friday, the whole world, the whole world, even those who are, do not know football that well, the whole world will be looking towards Brazil. So that is the reason. It could be anywhere. And our party would be just the same. The concerns we have would be the same and possibly even interpreting the thoughts of millions of Brazilians, of millions of Brazilians, to convey our sincere thank you to FIFA, conveying our thank you to the federal government, conveying our thanks to the state government, and conveying our thank you to all the mayors of Brazil and above all, our very sincere thank you to the Brazilian fans. Mr. President Blatter, please excuse me for extending myself, but all of you ladies and gentlemen present here, and above all, the press. I'm 82 years old. 
I graduated from law in the State University of Sao Paulo. I was the governor of the state of Sao Paulo. And at that time, I many times heard our national anthem. But I must trust, I must convey to all of you and confess that I've never heard the national anthem sung as it was by our players against Spain. And all of you witnessed that. When the national anthem ended, sung as it was by our players, I told my wife, who was at my side, the way in which our anthem was sang, sung, no one, no one will beat Brazil today. No one could beat Brazil, not even the world champions. So, it could be in any part of Brazil. What matters is that we be aware of the meaning of a World Cup that I consider it not only in the field of sports but also in terms of solidarity, in terms of union as the best instrument, the best instrument to bring human beings together. It could be anywhere. But fortunately, for our happiness, it is being held in Costa do Sauipi. All right, thank you. We are in the uh, extra, extra time. Uh, we stop here. Thanks uh, for being here. You still have one question. Not, not today. Uh, you have one uh, left. And uh, thanks. See you in uh, two days after the Exco. And uh, have a nice day. Thank you.